Okay, tapos na ang iyong thesis title, kaya ang next concern na ay ang iyong statement of the problem or SOP. Okay, bakit nga po ba ma'am pagkatapos po ng thesis title, SOP na ang pinag-iisipang gawin or sulatin? Structurally speaking, parang katawan ng tao yan. Definitely, merong defining structure sa katawan natin, yung skeletal framework. Okay? So, ganun din sa ating thesis. Yung ating thesis merong title ang kasunod statement of the problem. Kasi yung statement of the problem, siya yung pagbabatayan ng questionnaire. Okay? Or ng instrument. Definitely, yung instrument nakalink na yan sa findings, nakalink na yan sa conclusions, nakalink na rin yan sa recommendations. So, if you notice, yung mga kasunod na links nang galing sila sa statement of the problem. Ganon kahalaga ang ating statement of the problem. Okay, so pag-usapan natin, ma'am, paano nga po ba sulatin ang statement of the problem? Ano po yung mga dapat i-consider sa format, sa content? Okay, so pag-usapan na natin yan. So how to write the statement of the problem? Let's have this. Let's check this samples out. Number one, what is the level of acceptability of the module, worksheet, learning videos with respect to objectives, contents, format, activities, user friendliness, and applicability? Okay, so this is an example of a statement of the problem. Okay, so you will see here what is being asked. So, the level of acceptability in terms or with respect to these aspects. Okay, so mamaya iisa-isahin natin yan. Tingnan muna natin yung pag-uusapan natin. Kasi mahirap pag-usapan yung bagay na hindi mo man lang nasilayan or nakita yung simpleng halimbawa. Number two, what was the impact of pure modular learning delivery on SHS students' motivation and growth mindset? Okay, so anong uri ba ng SOP to? Pang quantitative ba to or pang qualitative? Siyempre, makikita mo yung hinahanap. Pag nakita mo dito, impact, ah, parang okay to na qualitative. Para ma-interview yung mga estudyante, ano ba ang naging dulot ng pure modular learning sa motivation at growth mindset ng mga senior high school students. So, dito kapag kinwalitative mo, malalaman mo ano yung mga saluobin pa nilang iba pa. Kaya sa bandang huli, pag present mo ng findings, lulutang yung mga themes, yung mga emerging themes. Okay, so... These are just two examples of questions under statement of the problem. Okay, ano nga ba ma'am? Paano nga po ba sulatin yung ganyan? Ano po bang mga dapat i-consider? So, let's have this. What is SOP for, ma'am? Para saan po ba ang statement of the problem? Okay, so the statement of the problem specifies the focus. So, when we talk about the focus, we are talking about the target of the study. Okay? With the target of the study, you will know what kind of data will this study get. So, anong kasale, Anong hindi kasale. Two, it defines the breadth and depth. Okay? Dahil sa SOP mo, malalaman ano yung lawak, ano yung lalim ng iyong study. Kasi doon makikita ano ang kinover niya at ano ang hindi niya kinover. Okay? Three, identifies the shape. So when we talk about the shape, so parang circle yan, dynamic, umiikot. Okay? Maganda yung flow. Kapag box naman, nakakahon. Yun na yun. So ang SOP mo ba pushes for further investigation? Okay? Doon makikita. Ano pa ang ibig ma-achieve ng iyong study through your statement of the problem? Four, it sets the direction. So, ano nga ba ang direction ng iyong study? Saan siya patungo? 
definitely sa pagsisequence pa lang ng mga questions, dapat hindi pa balik-balik nakakalito. Kaya sundan mo yung tamang agos, sundan mo yung tamang flow. Ito dapat ang mauna, ito kasunod. Hindi pwedeng maglabo-labo na yung tanong na dapat pang huli, for example, tungkol sa output, tanong siya dapat na pang huli, baka siya yung naging number one. Umpisa pa lang, tinatanong mo na kaagad yung output. Eh, hindi naman ganun. Kasi nakakalito sa reader. Tsaka ikaw din mismo, bilang researcher, malilito ka. Bakit na nang hinanap yung output? Or bakit na nang pinresent yung output? So, mahalaga sa SOP na properly sequenced siya. Kasi siya ay nagsiset ng direction. And number five, conveys time required. So, dahil sa SOP mo, let's say meron kang limang SOP, uh, alam na this. Alam mo na, okay, na ah, medyo time-consuming to, so dapat magsimula na ako kaagad. Eto, pwede ko nang isabay dito ang pag-gather ng data sa 1 at saka sa 2, sa 3 at saka sa 4 na SOP. Okay, so dito, mapaprompt ka na, ah, start agad tayo. Ah, gawa agad tayo. Okay, so ganon kaganda yung SOP. Kaya, Pagbuhusan mo siya ng atensyon na gawin, okay, huwag mo siyang baliwalain kasi siya yung nagdidikta actually ng ganda, ng flow, ng meat or substance ng study mo. Okay, SOP must be relevant. Of course, it should be relevant. It manifests strong connection to the study title. Okay, hindi siya pwedeng lumayo sa study title. Two, it should be clear. Words are properly structured. So, hindi nakakalito. Words are not in random collection. Okay? Three, specific. So, kahilangan, each question is directed at a target. Okay? That's what's needed. Each question addresses particular findings. Or each question can reveal particular findings. Hindi pwedeng nag-over-overlap na sila. Or ang broad na hindi mo maintindihan, ano ba talaga ang gustong ipahiwatig ng tanong na to? Hindi mo maintindihan. So, magugulo ka doon. Anong uri ng questionnaire ang ipiprepare mo? Okay? Number four, it should be research gap-based. Okay? What is the gap in your study? Or what are the gaps that you're trying to fill in? So, saan ba may kulang? Saan ba walang data? Yun. Yun ang magandang ma-incorporate sa iyong statement of the problem. And number five, it should be measurable. Okay? Lalo yung quantitative, paano mo susukatin? Kasi malalaman mo doon anong questionnaire ang iyong ihahanda at ano nga bang statistical treatment ang appropriate na gamitin para doon sa sa data na nakalap. Okay? So, medyo malayo ang tatakbuhin. Maraming mga underpinnings, maraming mga connect-connections kapag pinag-uusapan yung measurable. Okay? Kasi kasama na dyan yung mga ginagamit na statistical treatment. Of course, kapag nag-identify ka ng question, nakaupo ako sa isang defense na kapag finalize yung statement of the problem, yung question doon, naka-open and close parentheses anong gagamitin doon ng statistical treatment. Kaya ang linaw-linaw, for example, nag-profile, so ang katabi na kaagad doon, alam na na siya ay percentage and rank. Okay? So, alam na na kapag nag-level of or extent of, papasok doon yung weighted mean. Okay? Kasi may Likert scale doon. So, yung ganon. Kaya, kapag malinaw ang SOP mo, measurable siya, madali na yung mga gagawin sa kasunod kasi ang linaw na talaga. Okay? How about this? Let's take a look at this. So, SOP, this statement of the problem, is highly connected, of course, to the thesis title. So, this is highly structural. Okay? And we have, of course, the questionnaire. So, kung may title ka na, may statement of the problem ka, okay, determine mo na kaagad yung questionnaire na tamang gamitin. That's why in many cases, you know, when researchers, for example, approach me, ma'am, magpapavalidate po kami, ito po yung questionnaire. The second thing that I look for is the SOP. Sabi ko, paki, sama mo na rin yung SOP kasi para ma-check ko kung yung iyong questionnaire ay tamang 
ang kinakalap na data ay para sa statement of the problem na to. Kasi dapat nagmamatch sila. Kasi baka mamaya, yung questionnaire mo, hindi naman pala para makagather ng data sa tinatanong doon sa SOP. Okay? So, this one also, of course, when you gather data through your questionnaire based on the statement of the problem, nandiyan na yung findings. Okay, eto na yung nilalaman usually ng chapter 4, yung paid presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. At kasunod niya nang syempre, yung conclusions, which is, you know, under chapter 5, summary of findings, conclusions, and recommendations. And of course, the recommendations. So, tingnan natin yung link. Dahil sa SOP natin na nakasusog sa title, tatama ang ating questionnaire, ang ating findings, ang ating conclusions, ang at, at ang ating recommendations. So, di ba ang linaw-linaw? Kaya hindi to pwedeng baliwalain. Kasi siya yung nagbe-bridge between this set and this set. So, yung mga elements na yan na magkakasunod na yan. Kaya nga, ma'am, pwede po bang makabuo ng questionnaire ng walang statement of the problem? Uh, medyo imposible yon Hindi lang medyo talagang imposible yon na makabuo ka ng questionnaire without statement of the problem kasi saan nakabase yung iyong questionnaire? Okay, baka na-adapt lang or na-copy lang pero ano ang pinatutunguhan ng questionnaire na yon kung ito ay wala pa? So kung malabo ito, surely magiging malabo din kung ano yung uri ng questionnaire na magagawa mo. At of course, whatever problems we have here would impact this following aspects or parts in the thesis. Okay, ganun kahalaga yung SOP natin. Format. So, let's have this. Of course, the format consists general statement first. So, nakaparagraph form ito. Sinusundan niya ng specific problems. Ito yung nakanumber. Okay. And then, of course, mahalagang logical sequenced yung ating mga questions. Hindi pwedeng naglalabo-labo sila. Considers writing mechanics. Siyempre, kailangan yung SOP natin. Considers capitalization, lalo kung may mga acronyms dyan or proper nouns dyan, mga pangalan ng school. So, kailangan initial caps yan. Yung tamang punctuation, kama ba, semicolon, question mark, or period. Saan sila dapat malugar? Spelling, spacing, yan, okay, yung mga two spaces ba, three spaces pa, minsan yung mga hyphen, okay, for example, outcomes based, may hyphen yon between outcomes and based, minsan nakakaligtaan, so mahalaga na tama, sakto, follows writing mechanics yung ating statement of the problem. Okay, now are the much-awaited samples. So, we have here, for example, the title is Reading Comprehension Skills in English of Grade 5 Pupils in Blank Elementary School. So, kung ano yung elementary school, ilagay na lang dito yung pangalan. Okay, what's the focus? Reading Comprehension Skills in English. Nino, Grade 5 Pupils. So, tingnan natin yung, yung sample statement of the problem dito. Okay, the general statement. This study aims to assess the reading comprehension skills in English of the grade 5 pupils of blank elementary school, school year 2021-2022. So this is the general statement. Let's go to the specifics. Specifically, these six answers to the following questions. One, what is the profile of the grade 5 pupils in terms of sex? monthly family income and section. Two, what is the level of reading comprehension skills in English of the respondents? Three, is there a significant difference on the level of reading comprehension skills in English of the respondents in terms of sex, monthly family income and section? Four, what programs or projects may be proposed to promote regular reading among the pupils? Okay, so sa study na to, merong apat na statement of the problem. Okay, ma'am, apat lang po ba talaga? 
pwedeng dalawa yan, pwedeng lima, pwedeng anim. Depende nga sa kung gaano ka-comprehensive yung study mo at sa kung ano yung isasuggest ng panel mo. Okay? So, doon nakasalalay din yun minsan. Minsan, pinapabawasan nila yung problem. Minsan, pinapadagdagan nila. Okay, sa so one, profile. At sinabi, sino yung respondents? Grade 5 pupils. Kaya yung mga kasunod na tanong, hindi na inulit yung grade 5 pupils. Sinabi na na respondents. Malinaw naman, sino yung respondents? Grade 5 pupils. Ito yung redundancy na ina-avoid natin. Okay? And then here, may tatlong, tatlong aspeto ng profile. Sex, monthly, family income, and section. Minsan, sa pagsusulat ng mga researchers, nagkakaiba-iba yung order nila. So, mahalaga na consistent yung order. Kung ito na o na, all throughout, katulad dito sa number 3, siya pa rin yung mauuna, siya yung kasunod, at ito yung kasunod. So, consistent yung sequencing ng profile. Okay? Tsaka may logic, ba? Bago may tanong yung programs and projects, tingnan mo muna yung results. Kasi baka mamaya, hindi naman pala kailangan yung 4 dahil napakataas ng level ng reading comprehension skills ng mga bata. Okay? So baka hindi na to kailanganin na 4. Pero kung mababa yung reading comprehension skills ng bata or ng mga respondents, baka kailangan talaga itong isama sa statement of the problem. Okay? Of course, ang magde-decide dyan, ang magsasuggest niyan, ay ang panel. Okay? Pero madali nang magbawas kesa magdagdag. So, pwedeng medyo lumabes yung iyong SOP kesa naman kulang na kulang tapos doon pa mag-iisip o baka yung pa maging dahilan para ma-reset yung iyong defense. So, that's something, you know, that you have to be careful about. Another example, literature-based digital workbook in English for grade 7 learners. So, anong uri ng study to? Ito ay developmental study. Magbubuo ka ng literature-based digital workbook, tapos ipapa-acceptability mo siya. So, tingnan natin ano ang flow ng study na to. This study aims to assess the level of acceptability of the literature-based digital workbook in English for grade 7 learners. So mainly, tinitingnan yung level of acceptability. Pero later, pwede itong madagdagan kapag may idinagdag na iba sa statement of the problem. So specifically, these six answers to the following questions. 1. How is the literature-based digital workbook developed? So, tinatanong, paano mo na-develop? Kasi nga, developmental nature siya. Two, what is the level of acceptability of the literature-based digital workbook as evaluated by the teacher respondents with respect to objectives, contents, format, graphics, and user-friendliness? So, ito yung mga aspects na gagamitin, panukat, para malaman kung acceptable ba yung binuong literature-based digital workbook. Sino ngayon ang mag evaluate Teacher respondents. Ma'am, bakit hindi na lang po sinabing teachers? Kasi meron siyang dalawang uri ng respondents. So, pwede namang teachers na lang. Pwede namang teacher respondents. Later kasi, kapag in-expand to, na magkakaroon siya ng quasi-experimental testing the effectiveness of the literature-based digital workbook based on the performance of the learners, hindi lang teachers ang respondents na. Meron na rin mga students. Okay? Or pupils. So, of course, yung una, yung una, iba sa focus nung pangalawa. Did you notice? Number three now, what is the level of performance of the student respondents as revealed by the pre-test and post-test scores with respect to? So, tatlong aspects, interpreting, inferring, and evaluating. So, may aspect ka na dito. Meron ka na rin second set of respondents, yung student respondents. Ma'am, bakit po nandyan sila? 
Eh kasi ang tinitingnan natin ay level of performance na using the developed literature-based digital workbook. Okay? So para malaman kung effective ba yun, bago gamitin ng bata, magpipretest. Tapos gagamitan siya ng bata. After gamitin ng bata, yung na-develop na workbook, magpo-post test. So, malalaman na ngayon yung performance. Gage siya kung gaano ka-effective yung dinevelop na literature-based digital workbook. Okay. So, napansin nyo, yung 1 and 2 actually address level of acceptability. Itong third, iba na to. This focuses on the performance. Ma'am, bakit po siya kasama? May instances kasi na Kapag madali lang namang i-develop yung material, pinapasama yung testing ng performance ng students. Ngayon, pag super complicated, very tedious yung pag-develop ng material, hindi na pinapasama itong performance. So, it depends on the decision of the panel of evaluators. Ipapasama ba nila yung performance? Hence, magkakaroon ka ng pretest ng post-test, of course, yung pagpapagamit pa sa bata or sa respondents nung dinevelop na material. Okay, so, ito actually ay parang two studies in one. Okay, nag-develop ka na, tinest mo yung effectiveness. Pwede na bang nag-develop lang, pwede namang separate study yung test of effectiveness. But, pwede namang both magkasama. Okay, sa masters, actually, pinagsasama to eh. Okay? So, nag-develop ka na, tapos i-test mo pa yan, yung effectiveness niyan. Number four, is there a significant difference on the level of performance of the student respondents as revealed by the pre-test and post-test results with respect to interpreting, inferring, and evaluating? So, is there a significant difference? May kaibahan ba? So, Measurable ba to? Yes. Anong ginagamit usually sa ganito? Statisticians determine the statistical treatment best to use for this kind of statement of the problem. Five, how does the literature-based digital workbook impact the study habits of the student respondents? So itong five ay tila qualitative. Kailangang mag-interview ng researcher. Okay? How does the literature-based digital workbook impact or impact the study habits of the student respondents? Okay, kanina acceptability lang. Tapos, nasama na yung study habits. Okay, ganun ka-comprehensive yung study. Ganun kalalim yung study. Marami pang elements na inaalam. In line or in connection, with the literature-based digital workbook. Okay? And, of course, number six, kasama dito, what enhancements can be considered on the literature-based digital workbook? Okay. Bakit po tinanong, ma'am, yung enhancements? Kasi definitely, ipupush mo yan sa recommendation that the material may be utilized in the teaching learning processes in English classrooms of grade 7 learners. Kaya magandang ma-enhance. Besides, kapag pinapa-acceptability mo yan, makakagather ka ng suggestions ng mga nag-acceptability bukod dun sa mga nag-validate. Okay? Bukod sa mga nag-validate. So, parang maraming mga suggestions for enhancement, for improvement na ibibigay. Kaya meron kang makukuhang data for number 6. Madali lang kumuha ng data nito. Okay, so dito, mapapansin natin, if we're gonna go back here, of course, this is qualitative, okay? You have to write paragraphs talking about, you know, the process of developing. So, makikita natin sa sequence, sa nilalaman ng SOP, mixed method, ang study na to. Okay, meron siyang qualitative, etong 2 and 3, quantitative to. Yung 4, quantitative also. So, merong statistical treatment. Yung 5, quali yan. Okay? Through interview. In the same manner with number 6. 
Okay? So, mixed method. Maganda ba yung study? Yes, maganda yung study kasi kompletong-kompleto. Parang pag nagluto ka, kompletong-kompleto yung mga ingredients. Okay? Pero kung acceptability lang ang concern, so yung kanina, balikan natin, yung kanina ng questions 1 and 2, okay na doon. Pwede nang magsettle actually. Pero kung palalawigin, palalalimin, okay, pwedeng i-add tong mga iba pang statement of the problem with specific items or questions. Okay? So, usually, syempre yung level of complexity, nakabata yan sa level. Kung pang senior high school, syempre, medyo hindi ganun ka complex yun. Di gaya ng nasa college at nasa master's or nasa doctorate. So, iba-iba yung level of complexity. Yung comprehensiveness, iba-iba. Yung breadth and depth nung study, iba-iba rin. Okay, Another example, implementation of RA 10754, an act expanding the benefits and privileges of persons with disability or PWD in. Okay, so what town, what province, or what province, bahala ka na kung anong ilalagay mo dito, kung anong covered, or kung ano man yung covered ng study. Okay, so if this is the kind of your thesis title, anong mga possible questions? So, this study aims to assess the extent of implementation of RA 10754, an act expanding the benefits and privileges of persons with disability or PWD in a particular place. Specifically, these six answers to the following questions. 1. What is the profile of the PWDs in terms of age, sex, nature of disability, highest educational attainment, and monthly family income? 2. What is the extent of implementation of RA 10754, an act expanding the benefits and privileges of persons with disability or PWD in a particular place as perceived by the PWDs? So, ang respondents ay yung mga PWDs themselves of that particular municipality or province. 3. Is there a significant difference on the extent of implementation of RA 10754, an act expanding the benefits and privileges of persons with disability in, as perceived by the PWDs with respect to the cited variables? So, the variables were cited here in number 1. So, sila yun. Number 4. What are the problems encountered in the implementation of RA 10754? So, pwede tong pa-interview. Okay? Kaya, tila mixed method ang gagamitin dito sa study na to. Okay? And number five, what possible solutions are suggested by the respondents? So, minsan kasi, magandang marinig talaga yung voice nila. Okay? Yung opinions nila. Alam nila, nabanggit nila ano yung problema, minsan kaya nilang magbigay or they are generous enough in offering solutions. So, magandang kunin din siya. Yun actually yung ganda ng qualitative study ng interview. Marami kang nakukuha. Unlike kapag checklist, nakakahon ang checklist. Kung ano lang ang nilagay mo, yun lang. Paano kung meron kang hindi na ilagay? Hindi ganun ka-comprehensive yung pagkalap mo ng items. So, merong hindi mabibigyan ng atensyon na problema or concern or item doon sa iyong study. Okay, another study. So, eto ay parang qualitative to. Unlike this one, itong implementation, this is quantitative. So, from here to here to here, quantitative to. Itong extent dito gagamit ng questionnaire checklist, yung merong 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, yung Likert scale. Okay, basta mga extent or level of. Usually, usually kapag quanti, ginagamitan sila ng Likert scale. Okay, pero meron din namang level na competencies ang hinahanap. Katulad nung nasa 1 kanina, yung sa unang halimbawa natin. 
competencies ang hinahanap, yung reading comprehension skills. So, hindi yon pa-checklist. Talagang mag actual test yung mga bata para talagang ma-discern or makita ano yung kanilang level of comprehension skills. Okay? So, nakita natin yung SOP, yung mode of questions, ay nagdidikta anong uri ng statistical treatment ang gagamitin. Pero bago ma-discern kung anong statistical treatment, makikita anong uri ng questionnaire ang gagamitin. Okay? So, here we have work-study experiences of part-time higher education students. Okay, so anong meron dito, ma'am? Bakit parang iba po? Actually, this is a qualitative study. Napakagandang study nito para ma-document talaga natin ano yung work-study experiences ng mga part-time higher education students. So, this study aims to explore on the work-study experiences of part-time higher education students. Specifically, this six answers to the following questions. One, what are the lived experiences of part-time higher education students? Two, what motivates them to continue amidst greater challenges brought about by the pandemic? Okay, so if you notice, qualitative study to, kaya parang medyo limited yung questions niya. Pero napakalawak. Pag tinanong mo yung what are the lived experiences, napakalawak niyan. Okay? Plus, itong question na to, maari siyang manganak ng iba't ibang mga specific na tanong. Kasi kapag nag interview ka, posibleng may follow-up question ka. Depende sa sagot ng respondent. Okay? So, of course, kapag nag-gather ng data, hindi lang itong dalawa ang itatanong mo. May mga nakapaloob pa dyan na tanong. Depende sa sagot ng respondent. Kasi qualitative siya through interview. So, maaari mong itanong ang ganito as much as ethical pa rin. Wala kang nalalabag okay, sa ethics. Okay? Number two, what motivates? So, okay, yung motivation, of course, iba yan sa lived experiences. Kaya, gumawa ka ng isa pang tanong. What motivates them to continue amidst greater challenges brought about by the pandemic? Bakit nagpapatuloy sila? So, qualitative, may lalim. Kaya mong arukin. Okay? Through questioning. With the respondents. Yun yung maganda sa kanya. Okay? Depende lang kung okay sa respondents. Siyempre, lagi kang magsisik ng permission. Merong informed consent. Kumbaga. Para almost perfect ang iyong SOP, huwag kalimutan ang mga reminders na to. Number one, align your SOP with the thesis title. So, kung nasulat mo na, pakibalikan mo kasi baka merong medyo flaw, F-L-A-W, or lapses doon. So, zero it that your SOP is aligned with your thesis title. Two, decide on what's covered and what's not. Okay? So, sa paggawa ng SOP, desisyonan mo, anong i-cover nito, anong hindi. Kasi nandun yung scope and limitation. Minsan kasi baka may hanapin pa sa'yo, eh at least alam na alam mo, eto lang ang concern ng study mo. Three, avoid overlapping questions. Okay, halimbawa, tinanong na sa two, parang ganun din yung tanong mo sa three. Tapos sa four, nag-overlap sila. Remember, bawat tanong may sarili niyang identity. Bawat tanong may sarili siyang concern. Four, check the grammar and redundancy. So, hindi na iiwasan yung mga redundancies na yan, tsaka yung mga grammatical errors, yung mga do, does, did. Minsan doon sumasabit yung ating statement of the problem. Kaya sa finalization, tingnang mabuti kasi baka merong nakalusot. Five, be open-minded. Bakit po, ma'am? Kasi yung statement of the problem mo na super sure ka na, na alam mong, ah, okay na to, talagang pinaghirapan ko to. Minsan, pagdating sa defense, pagdating sa mga panel, they will tell you, ah, let's replace this one, let's adjust this one, let's have this one in this number. It's like, this is number two, let's make this as number one. Or this number three, let's make this as number five. So dito, be open-minded, be flexible, 
Okay, tanggap ng tanggap ng suggestions, integrate in the paper. After all, it's for the improvement of your paper. It's for the betterment of your study. Okay, so be flexible. Nothing is fixed here. Everything might be adjusted. Everything might be changed according to the suggestions and recommendations of the panel. Okay, there we have it. Sana nakatulong sa'yo ang lesson video na to para ang thesis mo gumaan, maging maayos, at maging okay na okay. Thank you so much. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and tap the notification bell for more lesson uploads, practical tips, and anything educational. Have fun learning!